Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mr. Khalid Suleiman with the first class in AS Chemistry Luxury. Before starting with this topic here, we need to take a look for the Edexcel Chemistry syllabus. We did say before, there is no difference between CIE curriculum, Edexcel curriculum, AQA curriculum. Almost they are the same, but the arrangement of the topics, way of the exams are different from one to one. In um, Edexcel that we have for today, we have the content of the syllabus are divided in four different papers plus two extra papers as alternative to the practical. It started with unit one and unit two and three as A is syllabus, four, five, and six for the A2. Each one of those units covering a part of the syllabus. For example, this one is unit one. I mean paper one. And the code for this one, WCH four or 11, Duration for this exam, as it's observed here, it's 90 minutes. So on this one is old copy of the syllabus. Um, in each syllabus or the new one, you will get um, the first assignment will be when exactly. This one it was 2019. The most important thing which we're looking for here, the component of this paper or this unit. You have the formula and the equation and amount of substance, the lesson for today which we're going to explain. Atomic structure and a periodic table, bonding, introduction to the bonding, especially the intramolecular forces, introduction to the organic chemistry, alkenes and alkenes. This one for unit one. For unit two, also this one is 90 minute exam paper. And this one is a thermochemistry, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bond and van der Waal attraction force, London dispersion, they both they both attraction force. Introduction to the redox chemistry, oxidation and reduction. I'm going to start with the periodic table, group one and group two and group seven in detail. Kinetic chemistry, rate of chemical reaction, a factor affecting this rate, equilibria, and the equilibrium constant, and then you're going to continue with the alcohols, the halogens, and the spectrum. Those are the two papers, and those are the content which we have for the AS. You can observe that we have, for example, bonding in the two papers, paper one and paper two. When we explain the topic, we're going to finish the whole bonding. Not only the part which is related to unit one. So okay, it will be easier for you. Except for those students who are going to apply only for paper one or unit one, as we did say. Then you have a choices here. You can apply for unit one. In this session, next session, you can apply for unit two and three. This one is up to you. Not as CIE, you have to apply for all papers here. We have the choice to apply for one unit this session, another unit for a second session. Like in general, we are advising the people to take the whole AS. Uh, because if you get bad in one of the units, you can repeat this unit in the next session. And then we have unit three. This one is alternative to the practical. The question which we have here almost closer to the question which has in paper six already in the uh, CIE exams or the common practical question which is repeated with the Edexcel exams. Unit 4, this one relates to the A2. We don't have a certificate known as A2, we have a certificate known as A11. So the AS 
which has unit one and two and three, and the A2, which has unit four and five and six, both of them gives you the whole A level, which we have. So once you finish A2, you will take the A level certificate. This one also containing the kinetic chemistry, more detailed one. The remaining part of thermochemistry, the remaining part of the equilibrium and acid-base equilibrium, and the remaining part of the organic chemistry. The same units also will be repeated in unit five, almost. Redox equilibrium, transition element is a new topic here. The rest of the organic chemistry, which is known as aromatic organic chemistry, and the nitrogen compound, and the rest of this organic chemistry with the sensory chemistry. And then you have another paper known as alternative paper to the practical will be applied here for the A2. Now we're going to start with this syllabus with the first unit, which is talking about the formula and the amount of a substance. Simple introduction to the calculation is started with this word, which we have, which we call it mole, amount of substance containing the same number of particles as 12 gram of carbon or amount of a substance containing 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 molecule or a molecular mass of substance represented in gram, this one is the mole. And last year, you know how to calculate the molar mass or the molecular mass of a substance. For carbon dioxide, for example, what is the molecular mass? Molecular mass for this one is sum of the atomic masses. 12 for the carbon plus 2 times 16 for the oxygen. So this one gives you 44. Methane, CH4, the molecular mass is 12 for carbon plus 4 times 1. This one gives you 16 as the molecular mass of the methane. For sodium chloride in ACL, molecular mass is, once you say molecular mass, that means you are completely away from the right word. Sodium chloride is giant structure, there is no molecular mass, there is a red formula mass, the formula mass here. So it will be 23 plus 35.5 for the chlorine, this one gives you 58.5. This one, 58.5 is the mass of the formula. Sodium chloride. The same thing for sodium carbonate in A2CO3. Two sodiums plus one carbon plus three oxygens. So it would be two times 23 plus 12 plus three times 16. This one gives you 106, as you know. This one informing us. If you have one mole of any substance, its mass will be the molecular mass. So if you have two moles, this one gives you two times the molecular mass. How about if you have three, it will be three times the molecular mass. How about if I have n mole, this one will be n times the molecular mass. And this is the equation which we have, or the rule which we're going to use, that the number of mole equal mass over the molar mass. And this one is the first rule we're going to use in the calculation, as we did say. Even this rule, we can use it in solving some question. Well, let's don't forget the rule. Here is the rule. Number of mole equal mass over the molar mass of the substance which we have. I have a simple question related to this one. Yes. Can you find out how many moles do we have in five grams of CaCO3? Let's find the information which we have. What do we need? Number of moles is needed. What's given? Mass of calcium carbonate is five grams. What else is given? The formula of calcium carbonate is also given, CaCO3. So the molecular mass for this one can be calculated. One calcium, 40, plus one carbon, 12, plus three times 16. This one all gives you 100. And then the rule, we have it already here. So the number of mole equal mass, which is five over the 100. And this one gives you 0.05 mole. By this way, you can calculate the number of moles. I have a simple question. 
heating a chemical compound known as hydrated zinc sulfate, ZnSO4. Hydrated, the amine, the crystal of this one covered with water molecule. So we have water molecule XH2O, which I don't know how many moles are they. By heating any hydrated salt, as you know, the water of hydration will be lost. So you have zinc sulfate ZnSO4 plus XH2O. In our question here, he gave us the molecular mass of zinc sulfate, which is 161.5. This one is the mass of zinc sulfate or the molar mass of zinc sulfate. The question said by heating 3.51, 3.51. Of hydrated zinc sulfate, we got 1.97, 1.97 grams of anhydrous zinc sulfate. Can you calculate the amount of water? So, when the total mass in is equal to the total mass out. So, the mass of the water formed here will be 3.51 minus 1.97. And if you would like to find the number of mole here, we're going to divide the molar mass, which is 161.5. And if you'd like to find the molar mass here, the number of moles which we have here, we're going to divide molar mass of water, which is 18. And then you're going to find the simplest ratio. One zinc sulfate, two. That's right. The number of moles of water which we have, which you're going to find it as seven. So the chemical compound will be, that's right, ZnSO47H2O for a question like this. So the real formula of the final formula for this one, ZnSO4, and we have 7H2O. This one, using the first rule in finding the chemical formula for a chemical compound. Even this rule can be used to find the empirical formula for a chemical compound. Empirical formula, empirical formula. What's empirical formula? Empirical formula is the simplest ratio between the atoms in a chemical compound. For example, if you don't mind, we have a chemical compound consists of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. And he said, a sample of this chemical compound containing 0.6 grams of carbon, 0.1 gram of hydrogen, and 0.8 grams of oxygen. Can you find the empirical formula for this one? The values which are given here, given in grams, you need to convert it into mole because you know we need to find the simplest ratio between the elements, but in moles. And you said if you would like to find the number of moles, you're going to divide the mass over the relative atomic mass for each one of them. But this one is 0 0.6 divided by 12. This one is 0 0.1 divided by 1. This one is 0.8 divided by 16. And this one gives you the simplest ratio, which is 0.05 here, 0.1 here, and this one is 0.05 here. So the simplest ratio between the three atoms, which we have is one to one. So the chemical compound will be with empirical formula CH2O. What did you get here? I got, the simple ratio between the atoms, which is known as empirical formula. We have something else, we call it molecular formula. Molecular formula. This one or this formula will be repeated several times. So you can consider that the molecular formula CH2O, all of it by R, where R is the repeated unit, and the repeated unit equals the molecular mass over the empirical mass. For example, if I told you the molecular mass for this question, the molecular mass equals 60. Can you find the molecular formula? For sure, the repeated unit in this case equal the 60 over the empirical mass, one carbon, two hydrogen, and one oxygen, which is 30. So this one gives you two. So the formula for this chemical compound will be CH2, CH2O, all of it by two, so it will be C2H4 and O2.
this one is the molecular formula for this chemical compound. For the gases, we need to calculate something, we call it the density, density. Density of any substance, this density which we have, equal the mass of the substance over the volume of that substance here. This one is the density. So what I can use it for the gas. So the density for any gas equal the mass over the volume. Yes. How about if I'm going to use the molecular mass? Yes, in this case, the density will be the molecular mass over the molecular volume for this gas. What is the molecular volume for any gas? Which known as molar volume, which is 24 liters. So you can calculate the density of any gas by this way. And if I ask you, which one is more denser, oxygen or methane? And find density for each one of them. For methane, this one is CH4. It will be 16 over 24. For the oxygen, this one is O2. It will be 32 over 24. Even oxygen is higher in density than the methane, as you can observe. The best one for what? Calculating the density for any gas. And using the molar volume and molar mass in calculating the density. For sure, also, you know well uh, how to calculate um, the volume and the pressure and the temperature or find the relationship between those information for any gas and something we call it the ideal gas equation. BV equal nRT, or you can say V1, V1 over T1 equal V2, V2 over T2 for any one of the gases, or the ideal gas. This rule, we are using it generally to calculate the number of moles of the gas, or using it to find the molecular mass once you finish and getting the number of moles, you can use also this equation. We did use this equation once we have Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's equation, which is said equal volume of different gases containing the same number of molecules. Like when you have one cubic decimeter of oxygen, one cubic decimeter of hydrogen, one cubic decimeter of carbon dioxide. As you have equal volume, so you have equal number of mole, and this person said one mole of any gas, this one containing, as you just told me, that's right, a definite number of particles equals 6.02 times 10 was about 23. And he said one mole of any substance equal containing the same number of particles, which we have in 12 gram of carbon. And this number of particles equal, as I just said now, 6.02 times 10 was about 23. Repeat it for sure. One mole of any gas or any substance containing 6.02 times 10 was about 23, which is known as Avogadro's constant. If this one is the number of moles, this one is the number of molecule as you told me. If I have two moles, it will be two times this value, 6.02 times 10 was about 23. In the mole equal n times 6.02 times 10 was about 23. From this one, you can find the number of the molecules, and this one equal number of mole times 6.02 times 10 was about 23. Or you can get the third rule which you have, which is number of mole equal number of molecules over 6.02 times 10 was about 23. This one is the third rule which we have if we would like to get the number of particles or number of molecules. So when I ask you, if I have one gram of calcium carbonate, can you find out how many particles do we have here? For sure, number of particles equal number of mole over, or certain as number of moles times Avogadro's constant. So we get the number of moles first, which is one over 100, but this one is the number of mole. And then number of the molecules equal number of moles, which is one over 100 times Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 was about 23. This one gives you the total number of molecules which we have here. Here is one for 
uh, this kind of question. Um, as you know, to start with something called a chemical calculation, you need to write the chemical equation and to balance it. And we have a group of rules used to balance the chemical equation. Uh, first, you're supposed to know the kind of equation are three classes, or the equation, ionic equation, and a chemical equation. Or the equation, we're going to write the name of the reactants and the product. Chemical equation, the formula of reactants and the product, but you need to balance it. Ionic equation depends on the type of reaction which we have. For example, if I'm going to write the chemical equation, I'm going to talk about chemical equation. C3, and we have H8. This one reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide plus water in a complete combustion process. Can you balance this equation? The rule which we have in balancing chemical equation, start with the most complicated, leave the separate element till the end, never start with the repeated element. Those are the rule which we are using in balancing equation. Now I'm going to start with this one. How many carbon do we have here? Three divided by the number of carbon on the other side. Three divided by one gives you three, but carbon is already balanced now. I'm repeating it. Hydrogen, we have eight hydrogen here divided by two. Gives you four, but hydrogen is already balanced now. Now uh, the oxygen is remaining. Three times two gives you six oxygen here. Four times one gives you four here. The total is 10 oxygen divided by two gives you five oxygen here. The equation is already completely balanced. I'm going to repeat it for you. This one is C13 and we have H28. React with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide plus water, H2O. Can you balance it? For sure I can balance it. 13 divided by one gives you 13. 28 divided by two gives you 14. Number of oxygen which we have here is 26 plus 14 which is 40 divided by two gives you 20. The equation is already balanced now. Even I can make it as a common chemical reaction, common, common, common. CXHY react with oxygen to produce CO2 plus H2O. Can you balance it? For sure. X divided by one gives you X. Carbon is balanced now. Y divided by two gives you Y over two. Let's count the oxygen in this side. X times two gives you two X's. Y over two times one gives you Y over two. If it is one, is the number of the oxygen atom at the right hand side divided by two gives you, that's right, X plus Y over four. The equation is already balanced. Balancing equation is important for us to solve most of the question which we have. Even we have a question related to balancing equation already. We're supposed to know it and we're supposed to learn how to solve it. Like this one. I have a chemical compound CX and HY react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide plus water. We can use them all as a ratio. Also, we can use the volume of the gas as a ratio if we have gas. He said 10 liter of this react with 50 liter of this to produce 30 liter of this, and he need a complete balancing equation with the value of X and Y. It's easy. I'm going to simplify the equation by divided by 10 here, and divided by 10 here, and divided by 10 here. So I'll get three here, and I'll go five here, I'll go one here. How many carbon do we have here? Three, so this X equal three initially. How about the hydrogen? Just fine, how many oxygen are used? They are five times two gives you 10 oxygen. We have oxygen in equal to the oxygen out. Six of the oxygen are here, so we still have four here. So how many hydrogen do we have here now? They are eight. So the formula is C3H8. This how to solve kind of chemical reaction. We call it the equation calculation for that one which we have here. Uh, would you please, don't forget, we need to know the calculation for the solution. What, what's the meaning of the word solution? The word solution is a mixture of solute and a solvent. And for the solution, we need to know the concentration. Concentration. Concentration is the amount of solute in a unit volume of the solution or the volume of the solvent which we have. This one is a concentration. I'm repeating it, but it's a concentration. Amount of solute in a unit volume of the solvent or you can say in solution. 
the amount of solute can be measured in different units. Can be measured in gram, so the concentration in this case will be gram over cubic decimeter of the solvent. Can be measured in mole, so the concentration in this case would be counted as mole per cubic decimeter. If it is one, is the mass concentration, this one is the mole concentration. We have another one. If you have very small quantity of the solute, this one known as P, P, and M, we call it part per million. Okay, how many part kill per million of the solvent? For each million particle of the solvent, how many particles of the solute are there? For each million particle of the solvent, how many particles of the solute is there already? This one can be easily calculated by finding the ratio one to million, which is a milligram to kilogram. So I need to calculate the amount of solute in milligram over the amount of solvent in kilogram. This one, how to calculate the concentration, which is part per volume, per volume, sorry. We have a simple rule for the solution calculation. Also, we're supposed to know it. Um, for sure, don't forget. You just told me, now we're going to return it back to the mole, so I'm going to use a definite unit of the concentration, which is mole per liter. You told me the concentration of the solution equal number of mole of the solute over the volume of the solution, and this one is the fourth rule, which we have till now. So for any solution, number of mole equal concentration time is volume. So you will get that triangle here, number of mole, concentration time is volume, this one for any one of the solution. For the solution question, we have a definite rule. If you have a aqueous solution, aqueous, this one is aqueous solution, react with B, aqueous solution, and the number of mole which we have here is X, and this one is Y, the rule said, concentration time is volume for the A over X equal concentration time is volume for the B over the Y. This one is the rule which we're going to use in the solution calculation. Sometime you have a concentrated solution and you would like to dilute it. You would like to make dilution for this solution. It's easy. Dilution of the solution takes place by adding water. Adding more water to this one, you're going to make something we call it dilution. How can you make dilution for a solution? By adding water, as we did say, or increasing the volume by uh, the water. We have a definite rule. Also, we're using it in case of dilution. The concentration time is volume before dilution equal the concentration time is volume after dilution because the number of mole at the beginning is equal to the number of mole by the end however you added water or not i have a simple question in this one the question i'm going to say by different ways if you don't mind concentrate with me i have a 50 ml of 10 molar hcl are added to 200 ml of water. Can you find the new concentration? Huh? Yes, it's concentration times volume, equal concentration times volume, and there is no need to change the unit in a case like this. The concentration which we have initially before it was 10. Time is the volume which we have, which is 50. Equal the concentration which is needed after dilution time is the new volume. What's the new volume? He said the 50 added to two two added to this one is added to 200. So the new volume which we have is 250, the 200 from water, and this 50 which we have here. From this one, you can find this concentration equal 10 times 50 divided 200 and 50. I'm going to repeat the question. By a different way, he said 50 ml of 10 molar HCl are completed to 200 solution. Find the concentration of the new solution. In this case, you're going to say 50 times 10 equal 200, not 250, because he completed it and he added only 150 of the water. Time is the new concentration which we have with the concentration equal 50 times 10 divided the 200 which we have. 
this one for what for finding the concentration and the different unit of concentration which we have in our syllabus however it's gram per liter or even parts per million as we did say uh, and even the rule for the dilution uh, we did say we have something we call it chemical equation we have also a unique equation a unique equation which we have uh, three classes one of them is neutralization the other one is precipitation the third one is redox neutralization can be acid plus alkali example hcl plus in the aoh so it will be represented by h positive plus oh negative and this one gives you water can be represented by acid plus base like hcl plus magnesium oxide that's represented by H positive. Magnesium oxide will not be ionized, so I have to write it as it is. So this one produces the water, which is essential for the neutralization plus magnesium ion. It can be acid plus soluble carbonate, HCl plus sodium carbonate in A2CO3 aqua solution. So this one represented by the H positive plus the carbonate CO3, producing carbon dioxide plus the water. It can be represented by the acid HCl plus insoluble carbonate CaCO3. So I have to write it by this way H positive plus CaCO3 as it is. So you will get Ca2 positive plus carbon dioxide plus the water. Those are the unique equations for something we call it neutralization. Precipitation, just write the precipitate like when you have a lead. Nitrate in O3 react with potassium iodide. I'm going to write it as precipitation reaction. So it will be lead to positive aqueous react with two iodide negative aqueous, reducing the lead iodide, which is a solid substance or insoluble. Okay, the this one for ionic equation. We may use many practical work support to us in the calculation like making chemical reaction producing gas and collecting this gas with a gas syringe making titration between acid and base and from this titration you can find the amount of reactants which are required to react with the other reactant and from this information you can start your calculation if it is one for the simple calculation which we have we have in the calculation something we call it the yield percentage percentage yield which we have equal the actual mass of the product produced this one known as actual mass over the theoretical mass the one which is calculated by theoretical method time is 100 where this one gives you the yield percentage of the equation is a method to use i was used to find the, like the efficiency of the chemical reaction which we have another one is known as percent atomic economy this one for the atomic economy which we have and this one you know you can calculate the mass of the useful product produced over but this one is the mass of the useful product what the meaning of the word useful product maybe you are getting more than one product in your chemical reaction but you need only one of them so i'm going to use the mass of this only one of them over the total mass of reactant total mass of what of reactant time is 100 to be a percentage for example i'm going to give you an example for this one here i have Iron oxide, if E2CO3 reacts with three moles of carbon monoxide, monoxide, producing two iron plus three moles of carbon dioxide. Can you find the percentage atom equilibrium which we have here? Taban. It will be the mass of the iron to Fe divided Fe to this one three, two, three. O3 plus three carbon monoxide time is 100 this one gives you the percentage which we have you better want to get the percentage 
You can also get the percentage of any element in chemical compound if we're talking about the percentage. If I have sodium carbonate in A to CO3, how can you get the percentage of sodium? It's easy. Two sodiums divided the total chemical compound in A to CO3. And this one is times 100 gives you the percentage of this sodium. If it is one for what? To find the percentage, however, it's yield percentage, atom economy percentage, or element percentage. Even the purity, you can find the mass of the pure over the impure times 100 gives you the purity percentage. All of them are used in uh, our calculation. We did say we can use many methods like collecting the gas, using gas syringe and finding its volume, making titration to find the exact ratio between the reactants required. And from this titration, you can complete your equation. We have something we call it uncertainty. Using the measurements which we have here, we may get like small mistakes because of like reading or wrong reading thing. The uncertainty is you have to find the small division which we have in your equipment divided by two. This one gives you the uncertainty. Divided by two for each reading. And if I'm using measuring cylinder, I don't have the small division which we have is 0 0.1. So the uncertainty for this one will be 0 0.05, for example. So okay, for each reading. How about if I'm using something called a burette? Small division which we have is 0 0.05. That's right, 0 0.05, for example, he told you it will be 0 0.05 because small division which we have is one. So it will be 0 0.05, this one is the uncertainty. So okay. Uncertainty by reading. If you're going to use the burette, you have initial reading and a final reading. Initial reading and final reading, so the uncertainty will be 0.1. It's okay, this one is uncertainty, though this one is the error which we have. Uncertainty will be, that's right. If you'd like to find the percentage, this one over the reading time is 100. Over the reading time is 100, you will get something we we'll call it. Uh, percentage uncertainty which we have for any measurement. This one you're going to find it easy already. We have many other rules. All of the rules can be collected in a small table or a small data here. We have a group of chemical reaction known as acid. They have their common reactions. We have a group of chemical reaction for a basis. We're supposed to know it. This information we have it already last year. Don't forget the acid react with the reactive metal to produce salt plus hydrogen gas. The acid react with the metal oxide or even the metal hydroxide. And this one produces the salt plus water. The acid react with the metal carbonate to produce the salt plus carbon dioxide plus the water. Those are the group of chemical reaction which we have for the acid. Also, we have another group of chemical reaction for the base. This one, I think we know it already, when it reacts with uh, non-metal oxide and also reacts with ammonium salt. This one for the chemical reaction which we have for the bases. Uh, Sometimes we're supposed also to know the thermal decomposition for the metal nitrate, metal carbonate, metal hydroxide because sometime he will not give us the equation. We have to know it by uh, our so. This one for some equation was supposed to know it. That kind of chemical reaction which we have, it may be precipitation reaction or displacement reaction or neutralization, all of this kind of chemical reaction which we have here. From the precipitation reaction, we can separate the precipitate and also we can find the amount of this precipitate. And also, we can find the amount of reactants and product by the simplest ratio. It's okay. If there is one for this chapter here, do not forget, if you don't mind, that you can calculate the number of mole using this information: mass over the molar mass, volume divided by 24, concentration time is volume, or the number of molecules over. Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power 20, 23. Those are the rule which we have to calculate the number of moles.
do not forget we have something to call it percentage the percentage which we have maybe yield the percentage and this one equal actual divided theoretical time is 100 and we have something to call it percentage atom economy and this is equal the mass of useful over mass of reactant time is 100 and we have also percentage of the element in a chemical compound number of particles of this element time is its relative atomic mass over the molecular mass time is 100 we have also purity percentage this one is the mass of pure divided the mass of the impure time is 100 all of this percentage we're supposed to know it do not forget if you don't mind if you would like to get the number of molecules this one equal number of mole time is Avogadro's constant if you would like to get number of particles number of particles I, I don't know what the meaning of this particle here I can say number of mole time is Avogadro's constant time is particle per molecule particle per molecule I'm gonna find many questions related to this part here if you would like to find it like when I ask you an exam we have um, sodium carbonate find how many ions are there in one gram it's easy sodium carbonate in a2co3 this one will be ionized to reduce two sodium positive plus one carbonate two negative so the total number of ions bare molecule is three now i'm going to use the rule number of ions which we have is number of mole which we said he said one gram over 106 molar mass time is avogadro's constant av this one is avogadro's time of three will give you how many ions do we have exact in this one those are the group of rules which we have this one introduction to the edixel um, chemistry first topic uh, now i'm going to show you the note which we're going to use this one is um, notes for this actually i did find the best book and i took some of this book and also we took the classified question from the best papers as we say you're going to find all of the information about the topic explained here in detail and then you're going to find the classified questions all of the classified questions which relate to this topic sometime you're going to find another topic question don't concentrate with this one just concentrate with the topic question the kind of question which we have as you know they are multiple choice questions and essay question this one is a multiple choice question we can start with uh, some of um, them if you want here it says asking you the mass of magnesium ion in uh, one kilogram of the sea water is 1.3 gram now he need the concentration in part per million so milligram of the solute over kilograms of the solvent so we're going to change this gram into milligram and the solvent already is present in one kilogram so 1.3 times 10 to the power 3 gives you the concentration part per million but answer for this one is as you said exact uh, number or letter b now i'm going to continue Calculate the total number of ions. Give us one, the rule which we have, which is number of particles. Number of particles, however, ion or anything, it will be number of mole time is Avogadro's constant AV time is particle per molecule. Now I'm going to continue with him. What do we have here? 7.4 gram. This one is the mass 7.41. Divided the molar mass of this substance, which is 74.1. This is the molecular mass. Time is Avogadro's numbers was 6.02 times 10 was about 23. Time is the number of ions, ions, the calcium hydroxide CaOH by two. So the number of ions which we have is three. One calcium and two hydroxide, but it's one time is three, will give you the total number of ions which we have here. 0.1 times three, time is this one, will give you the value, which is almost, that's right, letter C. Yeah, but this one is a kind of the question which we have as a multiple choice question. All of those questions which we have here, you can solve and try solving it. 
we have another kind of question which is known as a say question. Also, with it for you here, this one, uh, we're going to like to see the kind of this question. Come on, during the classes, you can solve all of these questions here. And if you have any doubt, you can return back to your teacher to solve it to you or help you in solving this kind of question. Like this one. In an experiment to make a crystal of hydrate, a carbon hydrate, a symbol of 5.6 grams of copper 2 oxide was added to 50 cubic centimeter of 2.5 moles of nitric acid. According to the following equation, which we have here, he said calculate the number of moles of each one of those reactants. Number of moles of copper oxide, because he gave us mass, so the number of moles equal mass over the molar mass. What is the mass? It's given there 5.6 grams divided by this one, which is 7915. This one gives you the number of moles. Moles of nitric acid, which we have here, it will be, this one is given in aqua solution, number of moles equal concentration times volume, and the volume is supposed to be in liter. So the concentration which we have is 2.5 times the volume which we have, which is 50 over 1,000, which is 0.05. This one gives you the number of moles of nitric acid. The copper oxide is in excess amount for sure. Any excess amount, this one is more than the required. You're going to say, because it's more than the required and you have to calculate the required amount from the simple ratio which we have in this equation, you have to write it here. Or you can say, because the required amount is, and you're going to calculate it, as we say, from the simple ratio. Uh, and this one is less than the given amount of the copper oxide. And so on, all of the questions can be solved by this way. There's just kind of the question which we have. This one you're going to complete with them. And as we did say, if you have any doubt with those questions here, you can return it back to your teacher to solve it for you. This one is an Excel syllabus. Actually, there is no difference between the Excel and CIE. An Excel is identical in this topic, identical to AQA. So the same notes can be applied here and here, only the kind of the question will be changed from an Excel to AQA. From the CIE, the two parts, as you know, of the concentration, uh, part per million, this one is not used in the CIE. And the gas calculation, it has a different chapter or different part in the CIE known as the states of matter. So it's not used here as a part of the calculation. It is used as a separate part. There's a difference between the three uh, boards, as we did say. Uh, this just to help our students uh, to understand this topic. If you want anything at any time, don't hesitate. You can call and uh, inshallah we're going to answer you. You can easily find my um, phone number for any WhatsApp question if you need it or any detail about the syllabus or anything of that thing here. Uh, thanks so much for joining the class. See you next class, inshallah.